Hi, my name is James Ramsey. I'm a product manager at GitLab. Last week, I, or the week before last, I uploaded a video showing partial clone uh, with a filter spec to exclude different file paths. Um, or rather, with a filter spec, you specifically describe the file paths you want to clone. Um, and so today, I thought I'd show you another kind of partial clone, which is by blob size. Um, since this takes a little while with the large repository I'm demoing with, I'll uh, kick off the command and then we can take a look at it. So what I'm gonna do is time and get clone of um, the www.gitlab.com repository, which is the about.gitlab.com website. Um, I'm cloning from a local copy of this with a partial clone enabled. And um, what I'm doing here is I'm filtering the blobs um, to only those blobs that are less than 10 kilobytes. And so typically in a clone, you just get a copy of everything you need, um, like full copy that you can work on offline, all the different feature branches. Um, and that's gonna include tree objects as well as file objects or blobs um, and commit objects. And so what the filter blob limit 10K uh, flag does is excludes the blob objects uh, that are larger than 10 kilobytes. So what we can see in the git output is a little different to the usual git output. Uh, we see that um, where we receive the objects um, quite a small amount, only 64 megabytes um, worth of objects. And then um, then we see a second um, I guess what would look like usual clone output, um, counting objects, compressing objects, and we're receiving a much larger quantity um, of objects. Um, and this reflects the fact that uh, things behave slightly differently when we're doing a partial clone. Um, in the first phase, we receive the filtered set of objects um, based on our filter command. And in the second phase, we're receiving the, all the blobs that were excluded that we need to actually check out the head of the master branch. Um, so this is in comparison to the usual one where it all happens in one step. For comparison, let's do a clone in the typical fashion um, and compare that for speed and how that looks. So let's take a look at how large this partial clone is. So it's 1.6 gigabytes. Um, but more interesting perhaps is to look at just the Git directory, um, which excludes the index or uh, working copy. Um, and that's 830 megabytes, which is pretty close to 735 plus 64. So that's not surprising. Um, and that's what we kind of expect. We can compare this to the full bear repository. So this is the complete bear repository that I fetched, which is 9.2 gigabytes. So it's enormous. Um, we'll see slightly less when we um, take a look at the, uh, the full copy here. But if I um, take a look inside of the partially cloned um, copy that we've got here, this is a complete copy of master branch. So every single file we need in the master, in the head of master branch is here and we can work on it like a usual Git repository. The interesting thing is when we um, maybe take a look at a different branch or a different revision, um, we should be missing some objects because we excluded a whole lot of blobs and we've only downloaded specifically the blobs larger than 10 kilobytes that we need for this commit. If I check out a different commit, we're going to have to download data on demand. So let's take a look at that. Get check out. Let's go back 100 commits on head. I think we should see some output. Yeah, and here we can see that we're talking to the uh, remote to get all the files that we need to check this out. Um, and so it's actually downloading quite a bit of data um, because there's a lot of images and other things that get updated frequently on the GitLab website. Um, so these all need to be uh, downloaded. And so all this is kind of interesting to us because um, 
This is kind of similar to, it's solving a similar problem to that which LFS solves. So Git LFS um, allows you to move large binary data or any large file out of the Git repository and store it in Git LFS instead. And so what that means is when you clone the repository, you're only going to get the small text files if you've configured everything um, per best practice. And then when you do a checkout, um, Git LFS is going to jump in the middle and then download these large objects on demand. Um, so that's a pretty similar workflow that's happening here, except using partial clone instead of LFS means that we don't actually have to decide upfront where an object is going to be stored. Is the file going to be stored in Git or is it going to be stored in Git LFS? Partial clone means I, the user, can decide when I download it which, one, which objects I want. Do I want just the small ones or do I want the large ones? Um, and that's really nice because it means if I introduce a large object, I don't have to rewrite history to remove it and put it somewhere else. I can just use Git. I don't have to worry about where I'm putting objects. I don't have to have LFS getting in the middle, using um, smudge filters to decide where to put things, intercept um, different commands and um, download files. Git's just going to do this natively. Um, and so in theory, if you've got a large project that you've already got binary files in deep in the history, um, you can just use uh, this uh, blob filter to exclude them. Um, so you don't have them locally. If you don't go far back in history, you're never going to download them. Um, and so it's, uh, it's really quite convenient. And so here we can see uh, the full clone has finished um, where we downloaded everything. Um, it ended up being 2.6 gigabytes um, and it took uh, four minutes. So um, significantly longer than the partial clone we did over here on this one. So um, I guess the advantage of doing a full clone is you're never going to need new data um, except pulling new commits that are pushed. But um, on the partial clone side, you're downloading just what you need and then anything more on an ad hoc basis. So um, I guess that's more similar to LFS. But um, I guess the advantage of partial clone is you get to choose how you want to download the data. Don't have to make that decision in advance. Um, your colleague that accidentally does the thing that you don't want them to do and puts it in LFS or doesn't put it in LFS, that doesn't matter anymore. You're in control. So that's a quick demo of um, partial clone filtering by blob size. Um, we're hoping to enable this um, or add a feature flag to an upcoming version of GitLab so that you can test this out on your own local instance. And um, we'll be looking to roll out support for this on gitlab.com um, in coming releases. Thanks for listening.